Welcome back everyone. I hope you've been enjoying the previous uh, exercises and I hope you've been training your eyes to see uh, visual similarities not just between cards and not just in nature but maybe your eyes have started to notice similarities uh, between other things in your environment. Maybe you start to see the three or four of coins in the way that tables are arranged in a restaurant or the five of wands in how um, sticks are arranged in a hardware store <laughs> or different things like that. Um, so the next stage, it's a logical progression. Um, the next stage is then to keep just our 40 minors. We're still working with just the minors and not the court cards or the majors yet. The method will still uh, continue through to the majors and the courts. But now shuffle your 40 minors. Let's give them a good shuffle. And then see if you can find the I rhymes in some three card spreads, simple three card spreads, two or three. And so we're kind of, at first, kind of going to ignore whether the cards are cups or swords and what cups mean compared to what swords mean. This is, again, just visual training. What are the visual similarities? What are the visual differences? So we might see kind of the red. My eye is um, naturally drawn toward red, typically. So we might see the red in inside the lattice work here becomes the red at the base of the cup. And this red then becomes uh, this root on the flower. The red in the middle, there's almost a, a lateral connection between the red in the swords and the red in this sword almost coming together. And that coming together then also rises up but then it changes, it comes together, it forms a circle, but then it splits and rises up on either side of the cup to join again at the top. And that same red here kind of keeps its gathering in the, in the middle at that flower, but it also splits out again in, in the red in these two places. And this splitting here becomes maybe the top of these two cups. So there's those kind of similarities. The yellow is also very dominant in this particular setup. It's not very dominant in the first card, but in the middle and last card, the yellow is very dominant. This yellow splits. This yellow also splits, but there's a central point of yellow. So maybe this abundance of yellow here is being divided and there's still something left. Maybe after being divided, there's something left. It's a bit harder to find the I rhyme of yellow uh, in this section, but if we look just at the yellow, these bars uh, on the yellow on the bottom and the top, actually the, the bar is red here and here. And so that, that gives some directionality, but this shape of the yellow um, is almost similar to this, but it's turning. So maybe that, uh, almost, we could even think of it almost as a cup shape, turns to there and then stays consistent there. This cup shape, which is maybe this way, turns to turn the cup upright. Maybe the cup is leaning back in this card. There's no actual cup there, but if we map this shape and this upper shape, and imagine that those two shapes are forming a cup, maybe the cup has to turn and, and stand up on the table to then grow. Even this central line uh, of foliage resembles that central sword. Let's try another one. Hmm. 
So here, between the wands and the swords, the red of the, the stems on the leaves reflects the red in the uh, scabbards, the sheaths of the sword, and the, that yellow reflects the bars across the sword there. That red also is reflected in these two pieces of foliage. The buds up here are related to these two buds here. So these buds were maybe coming together. Maybe that, that seed pod has grown enough to create a couple of buds. And then those buds grow more and they become th the three wands on each side of the single one. That single sword in the middle becomes a single wand in the middle there. And the foliage here, now where there's, if we look at just the three of cups on its own, the foliage and the cup, even though they follow a same line, there's a separation between what's foliage and what's a cup. But if we add these two additional cards, both of these cards are asking the eye to look vertically and to join this foliage with this cup. At the same time, where there's a visual break of space in the cup, between this foliage and this cup, there's a object break by the crossing wands between the lower portion of the central wand and the upper portion of the central wand. Whereas in the central sword card, the sword is joined in the middle, but it's blocked at the top and bottom. So seeing where spaces go and seeing where spaces uh, flow or are blocked um, or join up, that's also a really useful aspect of, of reading. Remember earlier too when I talked about how uh, when we have sword cards side by side, they form a circle and then two half circles that are opening on each side. And so here we have a sword card in the middle. These, this set of curved swords is opening up to the Three of Cups. This set of curved swords is opening up to the Seven of Wands. So there's those different kind of eye rhymes. And even here with the foliage, we're creating a circle here and a circle here. So maybe uh, the circles that were completed by these, if we turn them, it's like this pair of swords reflects this pair of leaves, and this pair of swords reflects this pair of leaves. And even that shape of the Vesica Pisces is reflected even here. It turns over and it curls a bit, but there's a Vesica Pisces and this central uh, tongue almost between the two uh, leaves then becomes that sword. It fully grows into a sword and then that sword becomes blunted as a wand. So all kinds of different visual connections. We can derive meaning from those visual connections later. This is just try, trying to train the eye to see in a very different way because one of the things that I find uh, we make the, the biggest mistake uh, on when reading the Marseille Tarot is we try to create definitions for each individual card. We go, oh, well, the Ace of Wands means this, the Three of Swords means that, the Nine of Cups means that. And the definitions are separated. Um, and while that can work, and there are lots of formulas too about well, what happens, what's the meaning when the Ace of uh, Wands is beside the Three of Swords? And, and there's formulas that are made up by people and there's tables of correspondences that you can find that give definitions of what, what those various combinations mean. But they're very formulaic and some people really like the formulas. Uh, sometimes I like them I and mean, they're interesting to read, uh, but it's a lot to memorize. And I think going only that route is missing out on the beauty and simplicity of the Marseille Tarot and, and this 
way of visually training yourself to see kind of across the cards and see how one card grows into the next card is really a really useful skill that is applicable to many other types of tarot too and will help you maybe um, make your readings a little bit more more coherent a little bit more um, complete rather than this card means this this card means that that card means that uh, it, it can maybe lend itself to a, a story more uh, experienced readers often no matter which deck they're using more experienced readers might look at a layout of 10 cards and they just immediately they know oh blah 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 and it's a short like one sentence answer and they don't go into this card means this, this card means this, this card means this. They get a feel for the overall, what's the overall theme, what's the overall message that is in common with all the cards, or maybe what's the shape that's made by all the components in the card, even with uh, more pictorial systems. So here, another difference, and this is just kind of something that's in the printing, but the background of this card is slightly different. So the, the Three of Swords being central already uh, makes it seem quite important because it's in the middle but because it's also uh, a, the cardstock seems a different color than the cards on either side that's also may, maybe an indication to pay more attention to the central card but then we get similar eye rhymes with the three cups at the top are kind of like the the three sections up here these three cups are like the the side of the scabbard the central sword and the other scabbard but then the foliage uh, between the cups is like uh, those two crossed branches and then similarly down here these three sections the cup is the middle that cups the side and then this foliage is actually the bars on the sword. The two swords on either side can be more reflective of this. Um, and that this branch could maybe then diminish and split into these two branches. All just training the eye, not necessarily for the moment, not necessarily looking for specific meaning, but just looking where are the similarities, where are the differences? What are the I rhymes? I'm not going to go through all 40 minors uh, with, with three card examples, but I think you get the idea. And so that's the next step along the way. And I invite you to try that out and just know visual differences, visual similarities, and um, still not quite making a story out of them yet. Maybe a story about this grows into that, that shrinks into that, uh, and all of that kind of idea, but not yet relating it to how, what kind of divinatory meaning or how does this apply to a person's life. That will come in time. First train your eyes. And once again, notice um, arrangements. This time maybe notice arrangements of people in, in groups. Notice how groups of people arrange each other uh, when there's two people compared to five people. Notice maybe um, how you see groupings of uh, different objects and different people. When you're in a, in a grocery store, look at how you group, uh, visually how you group uh, the produce when you're looking at um, step back maybe at the in the produce section and see how what kind of shape is formed by all of the green vegetables when you connect all the green vegetables together into kind of one massive shape what shape is that and then all of the orange vegetables or yellow vegetables and fruits how do they connect with each other or punctuate the green shape that's created um, so there are all, all these different ways of, of looking and seeing, because really the Marseille Tarot is, reading with the Marseille Tarot is the art of looking and the art of seeing. 
Have fun and enjoy.